What up, good people? Man, it's your host, Earl of Pearl. Welcome to another episode of the Ultimate 216 Show. You can find us every Thursday, 5 p.m. on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show YouTube channel, make sure you do so. I think we are a little less than 800 followers away. Uh, subscribers, I'm sorry, um, from 40,000 subscribers, and we are less than 800,000 views away from 20 million views all time as we approach our 500th episode and our two-year anniversary. So as always, man, shout out to everybody who tunes in for the flagship show and, of course, all of our spinoff shows as well, man. I can't tell you how much on behalf of everybody else, man, how much we appreciate the love and the support that you give uh, everything that we got going on on this platform. So shout out to you all. It's definitely appreciated. Missed you last week, was not here. Uh, last Thursday actually was the six-year anniversary of my father's passing. So I kind of took some time away from this to kind of just take in a moment and allow myself to feel whatever it is that I needed to feel. So glad to be back. Not going to waste too much time. Want to get into a couple of things and we don't have long to do it. So let's get started right here, right now. Donovan Mitchell returned to the Cavs lineup, dropped 29 points. I think that was his second largest scoring output uh, since the All-Star break, the other one being in a matchup against Kyrie Irving, Luka Doncic, and the Dallas Mavericks uh, shortly after that, shortly after the All-Star break. So it was pretty good to see him kind of out there moving around a little bit better than we had seen him moving around prior, seeing him being more vocal. We all know Donovan Mitchell to be a very vocal floor general, very vocal leader when he's out there on the court. Uh, to see him really just get his legs up under him, I think he hit five three-point shots last night. So clearly it was the best that we've seen Donovan Mitchell play in, in quite some time. And I think that's very encouraging. The Cavs got two games left. And for as rocky as this thing has been over the last month and a half, I think that seeing Donovan Mitchell get healthy, seeing the way he played against a horrible Memphis team. Before I go, let me before I go any further, let me preface. I understand that we played a horrible ass Memphis Grizzlies team that we should have beat. I believe they had 12 players that was on the injury list. And of course, John Morant has not played in quite some time. Jerry Jackson Jr. was not there to name. A few. So that should tell you what the Cavaliers was dealing with. I think at one point the Cavaliers was 18 and a half point favorites to win this game. So they walked away with a win that they that they quite honestly should have gotten. It didn't look so promising uh, to start the game. Memphis was able to hang in there. I think at one point the Cavaliers got down by as many as nine points. But in the second half, man, they kind of tightened up, got their stuff together, ended up pulling away for a convincing victory. And a game to where I think we see Donovan Mitchell play his best basketball in quite some time. We all know what he's dealing with, with you know, with the nose and with the knee. Uh, he was he was without the mask, and I thought that was encouraging. He seemed to be a little bit more comfortable. It seems like for him, when he put that mask on, he just couldn't he couldn't get his rhythm. He couldn't get his feet up under him. He just he just didn't seem right. So just seeing him healthy, seeing him being more vocal. And even with how bad the Cavaliers has played, even with how bad you can say J.B. Bickerstaff has, has coached uh, over the last few weeks, I think that just seeing him, you know, be healthy can create some optimism. The Cavaliers right now, after their win yesterday, are the fourth seed holding on to that last playoff spot that qualifies for a home court advantage. And I think that they're going to fight like hell over their last two games to make sure that they secure that four seed. A healthy Donovan Mitchell should create optimism within the locker room and within the fan base. Because, quite honestly, we all know without Donovan Mitchell, there's nothing that this Cleveland Cavaliers team can do that will produce uh, quality winning outcomes. That's just the reality of the situation. But if we can hold on to that 4C, and if we can draw either Orlando or Indiana in the first round of the playoffs, I'm quite confident 
and the Cleveland Cavaliers going up against either one of those two opponents in the first round. I think when you look at our roster compared to those rosters, I think we, quite frankly, are the better team. And I think that in the case of a team like Orlando, for example, I think that you're going to be dealing with the Cavs being a team that was in the same situation Orlando was in last. Uh, the Cavs being in, you know, the Orlando Magic, I'm sorry, being a team that the Cleveland Cavaliers was in last year. And what do I mean by that? Meaning that this was a Cavs team that that made the playoffs. They were young. They were raw. They were really ignorant to the whole situation. We remember the whole, the lights is too bright comments from Jared Allen. And we all seen how that playoff series, you know, kind of ended up panning out. And I think that might be the case for a young, talented Orlando Magic team who, quite honestly, has shown like, you know, they continue to write, add the right pieces and continue to grow with the players that they have, that they can be a force to be reckoned with in the seasons to come. But this is the team to, I think, a lot of people surprise. Um, they made the playoff. And so far, it looks like they're making the playoffs as a team that's going to be a top six seed, not a team that's going to be in the play in. And I think that the Cavaliers, it's the saying that we say sometimes in the hood called, oh, man, I got me. I think if the Cavaliers draw the Orlando Magic, then they got themselves. A young team that's probably, you know, defied the, the expectations for this season and a team that is in the same situation that the Cavs was in. You know, they new to this. They really don't know what it's like to play playoff basketball. They really don't know what it's like to be in a – a hectic, hostile playoff atmosphere because that's the one thing that we do know over the history of the Cleveland Cavaliers and Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouses. Once it's playoff time, man, that place is rocking. And so I think a healthy Donovan Mitchell that can sustain the level of play that we saw against a porous Memphis Grizzly squad yesterday, I think it can go a long way in getting the Cavaliers out of the first round of the playoffs as long as you draw the right opponent. You know, and it's crazy because those two teams behind the Cavs are the Orlando Magic and the Indiana Pacers, which we play host to uh, Friday night being Indiana. And that's going to be a, a game that I think a lot of people in the city is going to be playing, paying very close attention to a game that people is going to look and say, OK, even though things have been as bad as they have been over the last 10 to 15 games. If the Cavaliers can show us something against this particular team as we close out the regular season and head to the playoffs, I think that would give the fans a boost of energy if they happen to draw the Indiana Pacers in the first round. Um, and I think the energy boost would be there if we was to draw Orlando. But the key is Donovan Mitchell. If Donovan Mitchell is healthy, then yes, despite what has happened over the past two, three weeks or even over the past month, I think that gives some type of optimism on what the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, can do, you know, come come to playoffs. It's only been five games played in the month of April. But if you go and you look at the numbers over just the five games this month, you got Evan Mobley, who's averaging 16 points and seven rebounds. You got Jared Allen averaging 17 points and nine rebounds. And even for all his struggles right now, Darius Garland is averaging 18 points and seven assists in the month of April. So through five games, you know, you got, at least judging off the numbers, you got the surrounding supporting cast uh, playing pretty well and putting up some quality numbers that can be a contributing factor to the Cavaliers getting out the first round of the playoffs. So, you know, y'all let us know what y'all think on that part. Uh, of course, man, drop hashtag U216 in the comment section. Drop where you're watching from in the comment section. And I'm curious to know what your feedback is on that. Do you believe if Donovan Mitchell is healthy as can be, because he's not going to be 100%, but if, Do if Donovan Mitchell is healthy as can be um, come to playoffs and the Cavaliers either draw the Orlando Magic and the or the Indiana Pacers, do you believe that the Cleveland Cavaliers can get out the first round of the playoffs? It'd be interesting to know what you know about that. You know, speaking of the Cleveland Cavaliers, speaking of the playoffs, it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing right now. 
and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game, y'all. Right now, new customers, man, they're getting $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel slash UCSS, make your first bet, first bet and automatically win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So yesterday we had Corey Coleman, Cleveland, uh, former first round pick, Cleveland Browns wide receiver Corey Coleman on our show. Shout out to Corey Coleman for coming on. And to me, I thought it was one of the better interviews that we had done in a while. I am a person that loves to kind of talk about mental health, to talk about, you know, just other things that go on with these athletes outside of what we see on a day to day basis. And I think it's very important, you know, to try to get into the minds uh, of a player and just to try to figure them out as human beings. Because I think the more that you learn about them on the human side of things, I think it gives you. I just think it makes you cover them better on a professional side. I think it makes you kind of a little bit more empathetic, you know, to things that might be going on um, in their personal life that might kind of cross over to you not seeing the quality of performance that you thought you would see on, say, a playing surface. And Corey Coleman talked about a lot uh, during the, I think, 15, 20 minutes that he spent with us on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. He talked about the, you know, perception that was, you know, put out there of him after the, you know, episode of Hard Knocks where it shows him going into Hugh Jackson's, uh, Hugh Jackson's office and requesting a trade. Hugh Jackson being a former Cleveland Browns coach at said time, we all know Hugh Jackson was horrendous here in Cleveland. And for Corey Coleman to come on his show and to reveal that actually his position coach a person that he actually trusted was the person who told him to go into Hugh Jackson's office and demand a trade the way that he did right there, right now. Like to me, that was kind of crazy to hear. It's like, wow, you know, not everybody that you think got love for you, got love for you, or not everybody that you assume has your back is, is really in your corner for real. You know, sometimes people be having secret agendas or they be want to set you up for failure because they might feel some type of way about you personally. And when you're that young and when you're ignorant to how the NFL works from a business standpoint, then you are leaning on, on those people that's in that building that you're in to kind of, you know, steer you along the way. And I thought that was one of the interesting things that he talked about. Uh, he talked about, you know, him having an injury and a, a broken hand, and you know, having to deal with that again and just how that was handled by the team. You know, he talked about the biggest thing he talked about was the depression and, and, and the dark spaces that he battled, how, you know, he got to Cleveland and he wouldn't go home and visit his mom, how he thought about just him sending money back. He was doing enough. But his mom, being somebody who really, really loves him, was able to see through all that BS and say, OK, no, my boy needs some help. He talked about his issues with alcohol, alcoholism. And how that was a constant thing that he was going through while he was here. You know, the expectations and the pressure of being a first round draft pick. And y'all, y'all know this like I know this. Being a first round draft pick at that time in particular in the city of Cleveland probably was different from being a first round pick anywhere else. This franchise was so bad for so long. A lot of us felt like that whoever was the number one draft pick in next year's draft was the savior that that was going to be the player that turned this franchise around. And we didn't give a damn if we was talking about Corey Coleman, member Cameron Wembley, uh, Barkevious Mingo. I can go back through the list of so many players that was drafted in the first round for the Cleveland Browns during a certain tenure. And we all as fans looked at this like, okay, that's going to be the dude that's going to turn this organization around. And more often than not, those first round picks ended up being bust. And we will be very, very critical of, of these players' performances 
because we was pissed off. We always wanted just to see a winning franchise, a winning culture. And we always felt like, man, these these incoming first round picks was going to be the people who turned everything around. You know, and I'll be honest with you. Because I was not a part of the media at this time, didn't even know if I would ever be a part of the media, wasn't sure if I was ever going to pursue my dreams or not. I had my good government job. I was going to work every day and I was cool. And I remember watching Corey Coleman play and be just so frustrated with him. Like every single Sunday, it was just like, man, damn, it's always something with this dude. Like, this is not the same dude I seen play at Baylor who was always all over the highlight tapes. Excuse me. And that created some frustration. And then to go back just to yesterday to that interview, and I can kind of go back, and I was taking big bits and pieces of, okay, where I'm at now, listening to this man talk versus where I was at that age and just being a casual fan and how, how strong of, a, of an opinion that I had of this dude. And to hear all the things that he was going through, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I kind of felt like I didn't feel good about myself internally. And I got an opportunity to kind of, like, share my thoughts on the show. I'm going to play that for you all real quick before I come back and kind of just, you know, add on to that. But this was me after the Corey Coleman interview. And this, I think, was uh, G. Bush, Mikey McNuggets, and Adam Nabool was having a conversation, giving their reactions at the Corey Coleman left the air. Take a listen to this. Just to hear you all kind of talk about, you know, he's a human. And you hear my takes, and that's pretty much where I always come from. I think a lot of times people forget uh, football is their occupation. It's their job. But when they take them jerseys off, they're still human beings. And I try to be very, very careful when I'm trying to be constructive and criticizing an athlete to make sure I'm not calling them out their name, that I'm not being disrespectful, et cetera, because you never know like how that can have an impact on them on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I'm glad that you know he came on and, and he put himself out there to be vulnerable like that. And to follow up on what G said, boy, hell yeah, a thousand percent, there's a stigma against mental health in the black community. One of the reasons why I really, really wanted to do this outside of it being a childhood dream, a lot of times I would listen to the radio watched sports media, and I felt like black af athletes was not being represented right. I felt like that the moment that there was time to be criticized, that they was being overly criticized to the point that I felt like they were being disrespected. And I said, if I ever got an opportunity to be on this platform, that every time I get the chance to make sure I represent my people well, that I would do that. And so shout out to Corey Coleman, man. I'm praying for you. I tell people all the time, be great, spread love. Being great, come with a price. Spread love is priceless. Anybody can do that. You don't have to be friends. You don't have to be family. You could be a total stranger, pay somebody a compliment, and that's a form of spread love. Something for people to think about. Big facts. Being great come with a price. Spread love is priceless. I think people fail to realize, man, like you ain't got to be friends with somebody. You ain't got to be associates with somebody that you can spread love to a total stranger. Somebody walking past you on the street as you on your lunch break going to get something to eat. Simple, hello, you got some nice shoes, I like your hair. Those are examples of small gestures of spreading love that you never know can have a major impact on somebody's day. A kind word from you might make the difference between somebody who's been battling depression and suicidal thoughts actually going over the ledge or not. You never know like uh, how much a kind word that comes out of your mouth can have a positive impact on somebody else. One of the things that did disturb me yesterday during that segment of the show is reading some of the comments in the comment section. And for the most part, man, the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, um, we got some great fans. We got a great following. We have people that's in the chat that typically interacts with each other. And for the most part, it's cool. And it was a few bad apples in there yesterday. And shout out to everybody else who was making sure that they was pointed out so that we could kind of get those comments up out of there as quick as we can. But in a sense, it's like, well, who the hell is Corey Coleman? Why is he on this show? You know, and pretty much, you know, because he didn't uh, produce as a football player, who cares about what he went through off the football field? And I was really, really disturbed by that. 
listen, man, we got to show grace and empathy to everybody that we come across. And I think that people in the media, I think, you know, we need to tighten up a little bit ourselves, including me. I think that when it's time to be critical, when it's time to have those conversations and debate and in segments, I think sometimes we take it too far. I think sometimes that we allow our emotions to get the best of us and we say some things that we might have to come back and apologize to or that we probably wouldn't stand on if we came across close contact with one of these athletes. And so I think it's important to make sure that you keep the same respect, the same integrity, the same energy um, behind the mic, behind the camera that you would if you was around one of these players. Because let's be totally honest, man. Nine times out of ten, if somebody in this game ran across one of these athletes that play for one of the major professional teams here in Cleveland, regardless of what they feel about them personally, they're not going to act like that in their face. They're going to be in their face smiling, showing love, et cetera. I just think back to like, like the days before I pursued this, and I was listening to a particular station, and a particular guy came on for an interview. This was during the OBJ tenure when all the rumors around OBJ wanting to be traded were swirling around, and he called him a clown. And I remember sitting back like, damn, you couldn't find no other word to describe how you felt about Odell Beckham but a clown? Like, I don't know about you, but as a man, man, somebody else calling you a clown, that's 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 really, really disrespectful. And I'm the type of person that I'm, I'm going to be curious, like, okay, you know, if you was around Odell Beckham Jr., would you have called him a clown to his face? And if you wouldn't, then you probably don't have no business saying it behind his back. And so, like, there's a lot of examples of Corey Coleman's out here who was drafted high, who had a lot of expectations placed on him who failed to live up to those expectations based on things that was happening outside of the gridiron that didn't have anything to do with football, just the mental and emotional hurdles that he was dealing with that might have played a huge role and why he couldn't perform the way that he did in college on the NFL level, just the pressure. We never really know what that man was going through, but yet us in the fan base, and us in the media or them in the media at the same time was verbally beating him up and saying some things that he admitted to ultimately stuck with him. Now, some of y'all might say, well, Pearl, man, come on. Maybe the dude should have thick skin or these is the breaks or this is some of what comes with playing in the NFL. And all that can be true. But at the end of the day, man, he a human just like you and I. And as a human being, man, it don't cost nothing to show somebody some love and respect. Even if you don't agree with everything that they've done, you could just stay quiet before you be disrespectful. Or at the end of the day, when a player don't perform up to your expectations, man, we just fans of this game. You know, it happens. We don't know what these men and women go through outside of their profession. And so just like when we go through things outside of our profession, just like when we got to carry weight, and we just want somebody to show us a little bit of grace, a little bit of empathy, a little bit of sympathy, whatever the case may be. Like, just take that into consideration, man, the next time that uh, you want to be a little bit too harsh on somebody else because, I don't know, you didn't hit your parlay because they didn't perform well. So it's just something to think about. Um, shout out to y'all. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Uh, make sure you tell everybody, again, subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Make sure that you following it, ringing the bell so that you can stay in the know for everything that we got going on. Can't thank you all enough for spending time with me with another edition of the Ultimate 216 Show. Don't forget, man, the, Cla the Cleveland Cavaliers is back at home tomorrow night, Friday night against the Indiana Pacers, right? And this is what you can do. Check this out. If you wait to the last minute, you can save up to 60% off of buying last minute for sports concerts comedy, theater, etc. So imagine this, right? You got off work tomorrow earlier than expected and you say, damn, man, I want to kind of go see the Cavs, play one of these last two games, might not be able to afford tickets for the playoffs. Hey, they got something for last minute people. Again, 60% off buying last minute. Um, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. 
Download the app today, create an account, and you can even do this. You can use locked on code NFL. That's L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So make sure you download Game Time today. So by now, y'all have seen the tweets, the Instagram posts, the Facebook posts. I'm pretty sure you'd have seen the video on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. If you follow myself for G. Bush, man, you'd have seen a lot of content from last Thursday to now surrounding Deshaun Watson and the grand opening of Lefty's Cheesesteaks and University Heights that he is part owner of. And I was out there, man. I had a lot of fun. I got an opportunity to interview some fans. I got to work on my interview skills, but I am not really sharp at interviewing people. But like I said, I tell you with everything else, man, this game uh, is trial and error. I'm learning as I go, all that good stuff, whatever. And just to be in the atmosphere, to see the strong media presence, to see how strong the fan presence was. And it was all love, like all love. You know, you got to see Deshaun Watson interacting with people, uh, you know, his manager, you know, just people that's on his team that's around him every day. Uh, his, his little brother was there. His mom was there. Shout out to his brother. Uh, I even, you know, got a chance to speak with his brother after the fact via social media. He's a fan of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. So to let you know, man, everybody be watching. But uh, I really wanted to come on and just talk about the fact that you know, I'm 36, and most of us in my age group, man, we live in this social media world every single day. And sometimes we kind of get boxed in on what we see on social media is the reality. That what social media says, whether it be X, whether it be Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Whatever we see in these comments, whatever we see somebody say, whether it be from a local or a national perspective, that's what it is. And damn it, if social media feels this way, then everybody else does. And I can tell you firsthand, just to get that experience at Lefty's Cheesesteak, to be around Deshaun Watson, to be around his family and the people that he surrounds himself with on a day-to-day -day basis, and just to see the fanfare and the media presence be so strong and everything be a positive vibe, it really, really changed my mind on how the people, at least in the city of Cleveland, feel about Deshaun Watson. Because to be quite honest with you, I'm from Cleveland. I love my people in the city. You know, and it, even the people that's from the city that's watching the show right now that might not currently live in Cleveland, y'all the people I think about. I really don't give a damn about the national perspective or people who don't cheer for the Browns, ain't never been to the city of Cleveland, or ain't got no love for Cleveland. Y'all opinion, y'all can keep that. But it definitely, definitely changed my perspective on how people in the city feel, feels about Deshaun Watson. Just check this out real quick. Just to hear you all kind of talk. Wrong video. Check this out real quick. And shout out to the mayor of University Heights, Mayor Brennan. Uh, here we go. We're here with the mayor of University Heights, Mayor Brennan. Mayor, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How did we come into this being here at University Heights? Well, uh, it's been a long process. Uh, and, and, you know, I wish I could say it was an overnight success. But like every overnight success, it was years in the making. We've been working on renovating this property for years with the previous ownership. Uh, Lefty came along and bought it and finished it out. And it's beautiful what they've done here. We got the grand opening. We got the Sean Watson here. We got Sam Berry, the founder of Lucky's Cheese Sticks here. Uh, we got a lot of uh, Coach Stavansky was here earlier. We got a lot of great Browns fans, Browns players, um, the city residents. Just lots of excitement here at University Heights about what is happening here at Lucky's Cheese Sticks. Hey, listen, man, we out here, man. We came, we saw, we conquered, we, conquered. we conquered. ate. Hey, it's beautiful to see how many key people came out to support Deshaun Watson doing something in the community. I'm from this side of town. I grew up in this area. Like, the love was shown, man. So it just lets you know, man, the stuff that we see on social media, that's just a small microscope of what's really going on, man. I guess this is my message to Cleveland Browns fans, man, near and far, man. Don't get bogged down by what the naysayers got to say. You're like, those are the ops. If you ain't really cheering for the brown and orange, man, who the hell cares about what you think about Deshaun Watson? 
what you think about Miles Garrett, what you think about Kevin Stefanski, Paul D. Podesta, or anything else. At the end of the day, like Deshaun Watson belonged to us, us being in the people who cheer for the for the brown and orange. And to see us show up and show out for our quarterback, it says a lot about what we really feel about Deshaun Watson in the city of Cleveland. And what our perception in the city of Cleveland for Deshaun Watson really is, man. I cannot tell you how strong the fanfare was. You know, all the kids out there waiting to get at autographs from Deshaun Watson. The man took like a million pictures. It seemed like he stopped to talk to anybody that was willing to have a conversation or wanting to have a conversation. You know, to see his, his brother giving out free merchandise to people, to see his mother just going around, you know, speaking to people and, 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 taking pictures and giving out hugs like it was all love in the building and it's to speak to the people that's a part of his cap who talks about all the charity work that he does on a regular basis that nobody really you know see or hear about but to talk to hear them talk about you know Deshaun Watson is always in the city of Cleveland he's always around doing something and not once has he not felt the love and not once has he been disrespected since he's been here and he also spoke to how much Deshaun Watson really and truly loves being a part of the city of Cleveland. So shout out to Deshaun Watson. Shout out to everybody in University Heights. Shout out to you watching. Shout out to all the Browns fans, man, because it just goes to show me like that national perspective that we see on social media. It is not our reality. We're going to keep holding it down. We're going to keep cheering on everybody that play for the Orange and Brown because at the end of the day, we want a Super Bowl, and four is a part of leading us to a Super Bowl run. At least that's the goal. To next time, man, Earl of Pearl, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Remember, be great and spread love. Being great come with a price. Spread love is priceless. Peace. Mm -hmm.